let's talk about renaming the master slides in Google Slide. Now, as you can see on this screenshot right here, this is the drop down menu where you can add in any of these particular slides to your presentation. These dark black words underneath are actually names of these slides. Let's jump into a slide deck. So you can see I have one slide and it happens to be the title slide. When I'm ready to add in another slide, I might look at my selections and just look at their face value, which is great. But notice how they all have different titles underneath. You can actually customize these and make it work for your presentation. Now, in this case, you might say, Sarah, I'm really not sure why. What, what ability does that give me? But think about if you were creating an activity for your students and you were creating the master slides as a means to lock things in for them that they cannot delete later, unless they delete the entire slide that is. So here's my suggestion. I've got a little Groundhog's Day activity that I created. It starts out with these five particular slides, and I wanna show you why I chose to rename these slides. I'm gonna click on the shark tooth, and you're gonna very quickly see I have a title slide, and then I've renamed this particular slide spelling and letters number one. This one I call label the groundhog. This one I call math counting, math adding, spelling and letters number two. And notice these two slides are different. Spelling and letters three. Again, the words are different on each of these. There's a blank math slide, and then there's the label for the body parts. I did this for a reason. I know that my students probably were not going to be able to complete all of these activities, but I knew that some would. So when it came time, if a student had completed all of these activities and was ready for another activity to do, instead of fretting or worrying about what I was gonna do, I could easily go to my master slide, click on the shark tooth, and insert spelling and letters number two. That allowed me to customize and personalize this activity for that particular student. And the work was all done ahead of time. Now there is one caution. Now it honestly wouldn't make too much sense to duplicate this particular labeling slide, but let's say I had a different activity that meant labeling and I called it label. I could insert this, but notice I don't have any labels any longer because those were added on the top of this slide so that students could move them. That is one small drawback. But what I did for this particular activity, because I shared this out, is I did include them on the final slide. So as a teacher, if I wanted them to label again, I could easily come up to the slide, edit master, and they could come down to this final slide that has all of these words right here in as text boxes. And all the teacher would have to do is copy, come out here to slide seven and paste. This would then allow the teacher to be able to give this student the activity to be able to go through and do again. Same for the math. Notice I have this blank math slide. The teacher could easily pull this up, come to this slide, see the activity that's already there, and could easily give the student the opportunity to do additional math problems. You as a teacher will know your students the best, and if you want to, in the master slide area, you could build out numerous ones of these particular slides for math very easily. Click on this one slide down here that's blank and use the keyboard shortcut, either Control D or Command D, depending on your computer style, and then just type in new numbers. I would then come up and say rename and call this math slide number two. 
I hope this is a tech tip that you can use and build out activities for your students. It really can go a long way in helping personalize these activities for your students.